Okay. What is your best advice for someone who is newly grieving? This is a doozy of a question. I'm Nora McInerney. I am an author of several funny books about sad things. I'm a remarried widow, and I'm the host of the podcast, Terrible Thanks for Asking. And someone sent me this question recently. The newly grieving. The newly grieving. The first thing I have to say is that if you live in the West, specifically if you live in the U.S., we are so bad at grief. We are so bad at grief. And even if your specific culture has beautiful grief rituals, leaves time and space for grief, American capitalist culture does not. Most Americans have between two and three, on average, business days um, of bereavement leave, paid bereavement leave. Now, that, of course, comes with a huge asterisk, which is you get paid leave when you have a full-time job with benefits from an employer who decides that your loss counts. And usually those losses are reserved for an immediate family member, a parent, a sibling, uh, a husband, a child, now an uncle, uh, a cousin, e, I don't know, a best friend, ooh, I don't know, maybe maybe your coworkers will get together and donate some of their PTO. But if you're an hourly employee like my friend Mo was actually a self-employed person, a hairstylist when her husband died by suicide. Um, you don't work, you don't get paid. And even if you do get those two to three business days of bereavement leave that will, I guess, get you through some funeral planning, and then you're just going to return to your cubicle and you're going to pump out those PowerPoints, you're going to do the reports, you're going to go to the meetings, and you are just going to be expected to show up as a normal person when an entire hole has been blown through your life, your reality. And once somebody sees you acting like a normal person, they're going to assume you're a normal person. You're fine. Look at how fine you're being. You're at work. You're at the grocery store. You're paying your bills. You're, you're participating in society. Certainly, you must be as okay as your demeanor suggests you are. Now, at the same time, we're very uncomfortable with other people's discomfort. And so, um, you know, we, we do we frown upon someone sobbing openly? No. But like, do we love it? Oh, yikes. No. And I know that as a person who has cried several times in Target. Like, it's legal. They can't kick you out. All right. But your fellow shoppers, super not into it. I wanted so badly. I lost my husband, Aaron, my father, and my second pregnancy um, in October and November of the year 2014. I was 31 years old. I was a widowed mother of one. I wanted so badly to be the best at grief. I wanted so badly to be the best at grief. I did not want anybody to pity me. I did not want anybody to feel bad for me. I did not want to appear incapable or incompetent or who knows what. And so my advice for the newly grieving is this is put yourself first. Put yourself first. If you are a parent, that is going to be damn near impossible. But there's so many times in life where we sacrifice our own comfort for the comfort of someone else, where we try to sort of hide away our own pain to, to sort of smooth things over for other people. There's also a time and a place for that, right? Like when that poor checkout kid at Target asks how you are, like for sure lie to him. Okay, tell him you're fine. Tell him you're fine. But when the people around you ask how you are, you need to tell them the truth. Not everybody. You can't trust everybody. Not everybody even deserves your story. But I told my siblings, my mother, some of my best friends that I was fine. I must be one hell of an actress because a lot of people believed me. They believed that I was doing fine. I was so unwell. I was doing so not fine. And the more that I told people that I was fine, the more lonelier I became and the more impossible it felt for me to ask for help. I did not know what I needed at all. It is okay to say I don't know what I need. That is fine. But as much as possible, try to be honest with other people. My second piece of advice is this. Your grief is yours. It is yours. It is as unique as you are in your relationship with the person who died or the thing you lost. Grief is about way more than death. But I'm going to I'm going to talk as though it's only about people dying. But trust me, like if you're going through a divorce or if you've lost your job or if you've had the bottom fallout in some way, you are experiencing grief. 
and your relationship to that loss is as unique as you are. So I, a million people loved Aaron. A million people loved Aaron. I was his only wife. He was his mother's only son. He was his sister's only brother. Our grief for that one person was very, very different. And there are times where, yes, you can you can come together and you can feel like you are carrying this thing together, but each of you are carrying your own thing and you're going to do it differently. You are the captain of your own ship. You are the boss of your own grief. Let other people grieve however they want as much as possible. Try to keep your eyes on your own grief paper. Don't compare yourself to how someone else is doing or, or how they're acting. It's, it, it's such a difficult, confusing time. It feels like you are the only person who has ever felt like this. You're not. You're not. Grief is absolutely universal. It is also intensely, intensely personal. And while we're on that topic, I want to tell everybody, especially the people who are in that new phase of grief where it is so fresh, to slow down, slow down, slow down. American culture especially really wants us to be okay as fast as possible and not just okay, but to sort of alchemize this loss or this experience into a self-improvement exercise. And I strongly believe that suffering is not meant for your self-improvement. A lot of people will come out of a traumatic experience or grief or loss or whatever it is different some people, it's called post-traumatic growth, emerge from the fog of loss and, and grow you know, a new sense of purpose, a new sense of passion, a new sense of self. And a lot of people also don't. They don't. You are not required to sort of turn this, this traumatic event into something that betters you. And I felt like I had to. I felt like I had to sort of like... It, it, take this and say like, well, look what I built out of it. Look what I built from the wreckage of my life. And I built a lot of things. I built a lot of things. And what a lot of them were was a distraction. It was a distraction from feeling my own pain and the depth of it. Grief is long. It's long. Grief is a chronic condition. You're going to have this forever. It's not always going to feel the exact same. It won't. I can almost guarantee that. I still have it for Aaron all these years later. I can't imagine a time when I wouldn't. It feels very different to me today than it did that first week or that first day or that first year. And some days are heavier than others. It is not your job to try to get other people to understand this. It is not your job to try to justify it to other people. It is not your job to take the lemons that have pelted you in the face and try to turn them into lemonade. Your responsibility at this time, especially when it is so sharp, is to survive, is to take care of yourself, and to honor the loss that you've experienced. The depth of the pain that you feel is commensurate with the the level of love that you have. That sounds so fucking cheesy, but truly, like you don't grieve the things that you don't love. You don't. Advice for the newly grieving is like, be careful of who you take advice from. (laughs) Be careful of who you take advice from. All right. There are a lot of people who are going to tell you what you should be doing, how you should feel. Um... No, 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 no. We have this saying on on the podcast and in our little podcast community, like we do not shut ourselves. We do not shut other people. We don't let other people shut us. We are not going to allow people to tell us how we should feel, how fast this should go, where we should be at this point. We are going to let um we are going to let this experience unfold. I wrote a book for the grieving and for the grief adjacent, the people who love them. I called it the Hot Young Widows Club. It is not just for widows. It is for anybody who has experienced a loss. I am specific about it being death loss, but I think the lessons apply to anybody anybody who's experiencing grief. The book is an extension of my TED Talk. We don't move on from grief. We move forward with it. And I'm pretty sure it's still available wherever you get books. And I did record the audiobook too. 